And if you could explain a little bit about what you'll be talking about at this side event in trying to leverage or better use uh, the financing. That's correct, yeah? The financing for the uh, European Union Fund. Yes. I mean, as, as European Commission, we provide grant money for developing countries in cooperation and also for uh, tackling climate, climate change. And the point is that, of course, grant money is limited. Especially now when we talk about economic financial crisis, we have limited grant resources. So the idea is how to mix grant resources with other resources coming from, from banks like loans or from private investors in order to leverage higher amounts which can be used then for climate actions. Do you have to encourage or somehow try to entice potential financiers uh, into giving money to the climate fund? I mean, is, is that something that's being done, something that needs to be done? What we do is we, we are in close contact with public development banks and we are also, of course, in touch with the private sector. And then we see what kind of projects can we finance together. And we have set up for this <coughs> financing in the recent four years specific mechanisms. We call it uh, blending mechanisms. Blending means where you combine grant funding with loan funding or risk capital funding. Yeah? And then these, these funds can be used to finance specific projects in the field also of tackling climate change, like renewable energy projects, hydropower plants, but also energy efficiency projects. So it's a broad range we can use this money for. And you're hoping to better leverage those funds? I mean, uh, you know, there is scope for improvement, presumably. Is, is this what you're, you're aiming at? Yeah, I mean, I can give you some, some figures. We have used so far about for climate, specific climate fin financing, we have used so far about 250 million of grants. And the overall project volume finance is more than 10 billion. So this gives you an idea about the leverage we can achieve. What's in it for them? What's in it for the financiers? How do you convince them that it's worth their while uh, to, to provide more financing? On the one hand side, sometimes we provide um, funding as seed funding. For example, we have established a fund, which is called GEREF, where we have seed funding, grant funding, which somehow provides a basis for the others to come in later on because it is a kind of a guarantee mechanism we have established there. Yeah? On the other hand, um, very often it's also needed to provide grants for project preparation and uh, development banks don't have always enough resources to provide these grants or they don't have these grants and then we can provide these grants the project is prepared the feasibility study is done and afterwards you can have the project financing starting okay thank you um, so the, we've got the money there's, there's been greater financing of uh, plenty of funding uh, how do we better apply uh, the money uh, that, that we have available uh, to the various uh, the various projects that uh, that you're working on okay um, well in fact maybe the point of view of an implementing agency because we are an implementing agency of those type of mechanism uh, those blending mechanisms are very powerful very powerful for blending it means then to leverage as uh, uh, my colleague said to leverage the finance then to have plenty of instruments, tools and, and resources to finance diversity of, uh, of, uh, of projects, energy, transport, uh, forest, uh, adaptation. But it is also a mechanism that is very interesting because it is flexible. It means that the governance is very light and you can deliver very quickly. And that's, I think, because of we implement this for four years now, it is, uh, could be a very useful um, uh, example to learn about maybe for the discussion here in the conference for the Green Fund for instance because uh, it, 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 um, it allow um, a large it allow an increase of a large amount of, of resource but it all it allow also co better coordination among financial institutions and actors and with the government and the countries so it, it, it could be a very use it, it is a very powerful uh, tool. I mean, it's one of the challenges is the sheer number of people, organizations, governments, uh, recipients of aid involved in, a, in any particular program. I mean, are we always striving for greater flexibility uh, in the mechanisms? Is, is this always going to be a challenge? Yes, you're right. But I think if you want to manage to deliver 100 billions of US dollar, then you can deliver it with one actor even few actors, you have to deliver with a lot of actors. Then, if it is a fact, 
you have to settle, uh, set up a, a mechanism that helps coordination. That's the, another, another very powerful uh, learning of those type of mechanism because at the end, all the financial institutions that are implementing those funds work together better, coordination on the, in the field, but also uh, try to uh, align their process and mainstream uh, for the government and for the countries. Then to simplify the, for the countries and counterparts the, the, the way to access finance. And uh, we implement, for instance, with the EIB and the KFW, uh, a, um, a new initiative of a mutual reliance. It means that at the end, we will, we will be able to rely to one actor and that for, for the other, then to be the leader to implement the, the, the finance. It's, it could be also very powerful to act like this with this light mechanism to coordinate actors in the field.